Thanks for being here with us for STL TV Live. Carmen Young joins us now from Mutual of Omaha. And Carmen, welcome to STL TV. So you have an important job, important life, the life of an insurance broker. Tell us about that. Well, a lot of people don't see the importance of an insurance broker. Um, a lot of people don't see the importance of insurance, period, because a lot of times it's looked at as a bill. So mm -hmm. when people hear insurance, they often run the other way because it's something that's intangible. It's nothing you can see, and a lot of people feel like, just like with car insurance, if you have it, you may use it, you may not, and you know you might not get the money that you paid into it. But the thing about life insurance that I like to tell everybody is, one thing for certain, two for sure, nobody knows the day nor the hour. <clears throat> and a lot of times the thing is, you know, I've had experiences where I've trained somebody to become a broker, and we went out and had a great, wonderful, successful weekend, and unfortunately, um, one of the things that have happened within the past year and a half, one of the agents I took out to train for the business, I offer anytime somebody starts with me, please get life insurance on yourself. You know, make that your first commitment. It's horrible for you to go out there and try to sell something to somebody and you yourself don't have it. And unfortunately, like I said, this insur or this agent went out with me. We had a blast on the weekend, made a lot of money. And unfortunately, um, his stepsister called me and was telling me that um, he had passed away. His dad had shot and killed him, which was a pastor of a church. And she asked me, you know, did he get the insurance for you, from you when you offered it when he started the job? Because she had also started as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to break the news, and it was very painful, but I had to tell her, well, no. He said that he was going to wait till he made his first $1,000, and then he was going to get the insurance when mm -hmm. he was more stable because he had a, a wife and a kid, and he was trying to support them, which I understand. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you know, it's unfortunately nothing I can do. Life insurance is something that you have to get while you're living and you're healthy. And like I said, no man knows the day nor the hour. That's exactly right. So what are some reasons that you use to motivate people to buy insurance, to buy life insurance? Um, the one main reason that I use to motivate people is I myself have a five-year-old daughter. Her name is Caden, and that is my world. I would do anything for her. And the thing about it is if I pass away, it should not be my mom's on a fixed income and she's on disability. It should not be my mother's responsibility that if I pass, she has to take care of my child. While I'm living, I should be protecting my wealth while building my wealth. And the mm -hmm. only way to do that is to have life insurance. Right now, I'm not worth $200,000, dollars But if I buy a life insurance policy that I pay a minimum of maybe 30 to $50 on each mm -hmm. month, then, um, you know, I'm buying that policy for Two hundred or five hundred thousand dollars, but if I pass away, yeah, I haven't made that much in my career, but I'm worth, like my mom says, you're worth more dead than you are alive. You know, mm -hmm. so I try to tell people protect your wealth, if not for the fact that you don't see where it's profitable or where it's important. Your kids need you, whether you're here or whether you're gone. There is still a financial responsibility for your children. Look mm -hmm. at it for them. Um, I often tell people, God said the riches are in the land. He never said that we have to die to get it. So if you take the proper steps and educate yourself on different things that a lot of us are ignorant to, then you can learn how life insurance can actually be a living benefit as opposed to a death benefit. Mm -hmm. And Carmen, what inspired you to become a broker? Honestly, um, I had a grandmother who was underinsured. I've had other family members who did not have insurance. And a lot of times when you belong to a church, the thing that you see often happen is there are regular members that go to church, they don't have insurance. So when they do pass away, they have to call pastor or call sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so or family members. And then it creates a family feud because mm -hmm. now your sisters are bickering because you didn't pay your half of mom's life insurance policy or you got this much and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So you were inspired to, to stop those feuds and, yes, and make it a definitely. lot easier for other people. Make so. sure the family is protected and that, you know, if you take care of your own responsibilities while you're alive, nobody has to fight when you're gone. Exactly. Very, very good tips from you, Carmen Young. Thank you so much for joining us on STL Live. We have to take a quick break. You can reach Carmen at her number and website on the screen. And coming up, have you ever tried out a job before accepting it? We'll tell you how that's possible when we return. Stay with us here for more STL TV Live.